I have no idea how to do this. I'm screwed. I have no idea how to do this. Ah, let's add it to do. We should definitely solve this. I'm so senior. Now it belongs to the universe. Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel. And today's video is going to be about clearing up misconceptions having to do with coding. I've noticed a lot in like some of the comments in my videos and like Reddit threads and stuff that people who don't necessarily code or they're like new to coding, they have like a lot of these preconceived notions about coding that make it seem like more difficult than it is or make it seem like the barrier to entry is like really high or kind of make it seem like the people who like already know how to code are like super geniuses or something. And while there are like really smart people who code, like the barrier to entry is not as high as you think and it's not necessarily as difficult as you think. So in this video I'll address a few of those misconceptions and kind of explain them a little bit and hopefully by the end of the video that intimidation factor that comes with coding will be like dropped quite a bit and you'll feel more confident about like getting into it and adding that to your technical tool set. So the whole idea for this video came from a comment a user left on my keylogger video. Basically in this video I created a program where when you type things on the keyboard it gets recorded to disk and then the program emails those files to yourself with all the recorded keys so you can kind of spy on yourself or spy on like someone else who's using the computer where the program is running on basically he he asks like where he can find tutorials to to do this kind of specific thing like writing key loggers and programmatically sending emails and, and stuff like this he says he like followed a book and and did some tutorials to learn c but none of them said like anything like really specific like this so i guess i i just kind of wanted to address this a little bit and then kind of talk about about like on a really high level how I, I made this program. So basically what happened is I, I wrote this program in C sharp, the keylogger, and at some point I must have done like a C sharp tutorial at some point, I don't really even remember honestly, but after you do like a coding tutorial, you have like a really tiny like knowledge base in your head of like how to use that particular language and how to do like certain like really simplistic things. So basically like the process that, that I use to make a program like this, basically in my head, I'm like, okay, like I thought to myself, like, okay, like, how do I capture keystrokes in C sharp? I have zero idea how to do that. So I just go to Google essentially and be like, how to capture keystrokes with C sharp. And then I find some code that looks like it makes sense. I take it and I, I kind of control C, control V it into my code editor and then kind of mess with it until it, it does like what I want it to. I might not even have to like edit it that much. And then after like, you know, several hours of messing with it, I finally have something that at least captures keystrokes. And then the next step is I have to like write them to a a file somehow. And I'm like, well, how do I write a, how do I write text to a file in C sharp? You know, I know it's possible. It doesn't seem that complicated, but I don't off the top of my head, like, I don't know how to do that. So maybe I'll go to Google again, how to write text to a file with C sharp. And maybe I'll be like directed to the Microsoft documentation, or maybe I'll find like a stack overflow thread or something where somebody already implemented it. And I'll be like, huh, okay. And I'll just like control C control V that again, and then kind of tweak it a little bit. So it makes sense for my implementation. And then I can kind of move on to the next thing, which would be like sending an email, like programmatically sending an email. So I might be like, well, I know that sending email, you can do that programmatically, but like, how do I do it? I don't know. I have no idea again. So I go to Google and be like, okay, like how to autom how to programmatically send Gmail with C sharp. And then I might find documentation again from Google or something or Microsoft, or I might find another nice implementation, like already done on stack overflow and then go like control C control V that again and kind of retrofit it to make it work for my application. Like maybe I have to change like some value use like the mail server or something like this or add some error handling or, or something like this but pretty much I can just like take someone else's code or read some documentation and then kind of implement it at that point it's not like I have like a book or something where I can be like the book is like titled like how to send emails in C sharp or like how to write key loggers in C sharp it's like all these like little parts everywhere that you can like kind of pull together and then make your own application so it's not like um, I think this uh, Joel is he's kind of thinking about it in reverse like I watched some tutorials and then I learned how to, to make a keylogger or something. It's not like that at all. It's more so like maybe I watched like a simple tutorial and then I have like ultra super low baseline knowledge and then I get an idea like, hmm, I want to make like a keylogger, for example. And then I just go and like read that specific documentation. I just like Google those specific things that I want to do. And then like where you're that like simple coding tutorial where those come in useful, they kind of help you like learn the syntax and like learn what's possible to do 
in code. So for example, in the keylogger situation, the user's been typing keys. Maybe I want to send that file that the keys are being recorded to. I want to email that after the file has reached like 300 bytes in size, for instance. So I might use like a simple if else statement, like if this file size is 300 bytes, then execute send mail function, something like this. And even then I'll have to Google like, like how do I know when the, the local file with the keys stored in is 300 bytes? I don't know. I'll go to Google how to check file size with C sharp. And then I'll be like, huh, okay. And then copy that and like paste it in the code. And then before you know it, you have like a working code. Maybe it's like really janky. Maybe it's like poorly written and stuff, but at least you have a program that runs that like, you know, thousands of people can, can watch and, and use as well if they want to. For this particular program that I made, the keylogger, actually like the, the logic and stuff to actually capture the keys is like quite complicated. Somebody else like actually made this implementation and I, I pretty much just like copied all of it, to be honest. I have two versions of this video, like one technical deep dive of it, where I really try to like go in and understand like all the libraries that are in use to make this program actually work. And I didn't know any of those and I studied them hard for the video and I kind of learned them at the time, but they're like gone from my memory already. They're in this video. And if you watch the video, it looks like I know what I'm doing and it looks like I'm like just banging them out off the top of my head. But I don't know if like anyone can like really even do this unless they're like super like intimate with like the Windows OS, and like the Windows like API and all of that. It's not really like how it works. And kind of another thing, like moving away from this particular program, I, at least for myself, and I'm pretty sure for a lot of people, like a lot of software engineers and coders, like we don't really memorize like anything, especially people who work with like multiple languages and there's like multiple syntaxes. Like I can say, cause I've been using like maybe PowerShell recently. I've totally forgot like Python syntax and I've totally forgot like C sharp syntax. Like if I think about it now, I can barely even write a line of C sharp, even though I made this, you know, keylogger. Like having said that, it's like really easy to kind of get back in the groove of it again. But when I start, like when I put down a language for a long time and I pick it up, I have to like Google the most simple things like you know c sharp for loop like c sharp while loop like i cannot remember the syntax on how to do those things and i i feel that's the same for like a lot of people like we don't really memorize syntax and like memorize libraries and like memorize commands it's more in the sense that we you know we've done enough tutorials or something or we've done some projects where we kind of like know what's possible like even after you do a couple tutorials you'll have like an idea in your head that you know what's possible like you know you can store values and variables you know you can do like if else statements you know you can do loops, you know you, and then the more you do, you'll realize like, okay, I can read and write from text files. Like I can take user input and like, I can do this and that. And you, you kind of like in your brain, like expands for the things that you know what's possible. It's just a matter of like Googling them or like reading documentation to figure out like how to actually implement those things. So when you're going through coding tutorials, like say you're learning Python or something like this, don't focus on like, okay, I got to remember the syntax. I got to remember this and that. Like don't focus on trying to remember like anything because it's it's like almost impossible. Like the stuff you do remember, it'll be like on accident. More so focus on like, okay, like this is possible, you know, with Python or, or or any language, or I can do this or I can do that. And then once you kind of like know what's possible to do, it makes it like really easy to like piece together applications or build some like tool or something or like whatever you want to do. It's just a matter of like reading the documentation or like looking on Stack Overflow or Reddit or like wherever you can find code snippets and like kind of learn how to do things. Coding tutorials are like really important in the sense that they kind of teach you what's possible from a high level. And then the rest is up to you. Like when you go to build your application, the rest is up to you to kind of Google and like look up the things that you need to learn how to implement it. And another point I kind of want to talk about is language selection. Like there's always this question, like which language should I learn first? Like which one's best? Like which one makes the most salary? And there, there's probably like some distinction between those like questions and arguments and stuff. But for the most part, they're, they're all like really similar, especially like modern high level languages languages because you can you can do almost anything with with any language to be honest and when you learn one language, it becomes like really easy to learn another language because it's not necessarily like you're learning the programming language. You're pretty much just understanding the syntax of that like particular language, but you can do the same thing with like other languages. It's just a matter of like getting used to the other language. And the way I think about programming languages, I kind of think about like art mediums, like pencil and charcoal and like oil paint or watercolors or something like that. That's kind of like how all the different languages are. So say you have like an artist, like a world renowned 
renowned artist who specializes in charcoal drawings or something like that. They make the best charcoal drawings in the world. That person can probably pick up a pencil and make a really dope drawing. It's not like there's that, that much distinction between the languages. Like if, if there's someone who's like really good at oil painting, they can probably pick up a pencil and, and draw something that looks okay, you know, at the very, at the very least. And if they put a lot of time and effort into it, they can draw, they can probably be able to draw with a pencil, like really freaking good. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter that much. Like if you're too, if you're really like caught up on like, which one should I learn first? Like I always tell people like, just learn Python, unless you're like a windows system administrator, maybe you want to learn PowerShell can, so you can use it at work more seamlessly, but just pick like a nice, like modern high level language, JavaScript, Python, something like this, and just dive like pretty deep with that. And then when you have the necessity to learn another language, it's going to be very easy for you to do so because you already have exposure and maybe you've, you've already built a couple projects with your first language of choice. And another thing I kind of want to talk about is kind of going off that art medium analogy, like where the paints are languages. A lot of people, people sometimes say like, I want to get really good at like Java. Or I, I want to get like really good at Python. But I when in my head, I think like, what do you mean by like really good at it? Like, what do you mean by you want to know like Python? Because there's like a lot of levels to it. Like you can do like something so simple from like hello world to creating some like crazy eloquent algorithm that was like never intended to be made when Python when Python was written. There's like that whole spectrum of being able to do stuff with a language. And it kind of reminds me, I, I saw this Reddit thread when I was going through the computer science bachelor's degree at WGU. There's a thread where someone was talking about the class data structures and algorithms too, which is, is pretty difficult class, I mean, relative to the other classes. And someone was like confused about it. They they needed help. They were like, man, I went through like the whole Python book and I, I studied Python like so much for like a month, but I can't do anything with this class at all. And that's because probably like they were learning like the kind of core functionality of Python, but the data structures and algorithms class is like taking Python and making it do like a bunch of like weird gymnastics. Like you have to implement your own hash map and you have to implement a pathfinding algorithm and like you have to deal with like all these different data structures. So in, in this kind of class, you know, in data structures algorithms too at WGU, you, you have to use Python. It's like a requirement to use Python for it. But like learning Python is like the least of your worries, uh, if this makes sense. You, you're you more in this class, you, you better to be like more worried about all the data structures you have to implement and your choice of algorithms. And like we have to like label all of our methods and stuff with time and space complexity. You need to like be good at like all of those things like Python, like learning the basics of Python, super easy compared to all this other stuff. That's just something to keep in mind, like getting into coding is is really, you know, relatively easy. The barrier to entry is like quite low and you don't even need to, you, need, you don't need data structures and algorithms to create like a, you know, a, essentially a unicorn app. Like you just don't necessarily need it. It's good to have, right? Especially for like coding interviews and stuff like this, but there's, there's like a, a large spectrum of, you know, ability and skill. There's like the entry level one, but the ceiling is like, there's pretty much no skill ceiling to coding. You can do things that were like never intended to be done. You know, it's possible. It's possible. So yeah, to wrap things up, coding is like really useful. It makes you, especially if you're in like IT or cybersecurity, like being, being able to code and like understanding these kind of basic things we talked about in this video, it will help you like a lot in your career. Uh, in my opinion, it's definitely, it's definitely helped me a lot, like doing like little projects and stuff. So the barrier to entry is not as, it's not as high as you think it is. You know, there's a lot of genius programmers, but not every like person who programs is a genius. Like we don't memorize like everything crazy like this. We pretty much Google like everything and like read documentation all the time. Nothing's like really memorized. So you know, just go through some coding tutorials. And you know, if you're interested in coding, try to like build like a simple project on your own after you get through the tutorial and just kind of go from there. I hope this was helpful. I hope this kind of reduced the intimidation factor of coding. If you like this video or you agree, please consider liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it a lot. I also have a Patreon if you feel like supporting me and I do mentoring too. So just check that out in the description. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.